Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Would you be the jerk if you went and sold your niece's electronics? We'll find out, but first a story from Cruel Father. Am I the jerk for being honest with my son that I'm not proud of him? My wife Nina and I became pregnant with our son Jason when we were both 20. We'll admit it was an unplanned pregnancy, but we loved our son and kept him. We did our best to raise Jason to be kind, respectful, and treat others well, and we thought we succeeded. Jason worked hard to attend an elite university. Jason and his first wife, Sarah, had a daughter, Simone. Unfortunately, Sarah passed in a car accident before Simone's third birthday. Jason raised Simone until Simone was four. At that time, he met his second wife and moved two hours away. Simone lives with us. Jason visits once every two months, at best. He and his wife would stay for the day, buy Simone a present, then Jason would say it's time to leave. Nina and I suspect he only visits and buys Simone the present because his wife makes him. His wife, Iris, is a lovely lady. She insists that Simone should move in with them or they should move closer to us because she wants to be Simone's stepmom and spend time with her. But Jason shoots the idea down because he says Simone moving in or them moving would hurt his career. And it's best Simone stay with Nina and me. Simone is 11 now and she adores Jason. She makes drawings and cards for him, constantly bakes treats to send to him. It's devastating for her because her daddy is her hero, and he doesn't want to spend time with her. Her birthday was in July, and she cried when Jason didn't call her to wish her a happy birthday. Irish tried lying to Simone to make her feel better that the phone lines went down and Jason didn't forget, but Simone didn't believe her. Simone's at summer camp all this week, and Jason invited us to a party to celebrate receiving a promotion. During the party, Jason told me about how much more money he makes with this promotion and his job title, and he asked, You should be proud, old man. Job title and an elite university alumni. I sighed and told Jason that I honestly have not been proud of him as of late. He may have a well-paying job, but he treats his own beautiful daughter as if she doesn't matter. Simone is his own little girl. She loves him so much, and he doesn't even seem to care. Nina came back with drinks and Jason told her what I said. Nina told him that she agreed with me and he doesn't treat Simone right. Most of the family says that I and Nina were in the wrong to tell Jason I wasn't proud of him. They said I should know how much that statement hurts at any age because I was never good enough in my own father's eyes. They said that Jason is probably focusing on stabilizing his career and Simone can move in with him after. They also said Jason's own promotional party was not the time or place to call him out, and I could have just congratulated Jason on working hard and saved the drama for another day. I feel what I said needed to be said, but most of the family is disagreeing with Nina and me. Am I the jerk? The truth hurts sometimes, and I think OP's not the jerk here. Would you guys agree when I say as much as Jason wants to deflect things here or maybe disagree with their own parents, the fact is Jason isn't even doing the bare minimum of maintaining a relationship with Simone? That forgetting to call on your own child's birthday is enough to be not proud of somebody? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from OKAntelope4554. Am I the jerk for having my kids wear tie-dye when they're with their dad? I, 30-year-old female, my ex-husband, 31-year-old male, got divorced five years ago. During our divorce, we owned an old single-wide mobile home, 1973, on a large piece of land that's zoned for a trailer park. He wanted the new truck in our savings. I wanted the old trailer and the land. My ex and I have two girls, eight and seven. Since my divorce, I slowly started buying old single wides and restoring them, turning it into a business. I love it. My girls go to their dad's and AP apartment every other weekend. I started noticing their clothes, electronics, toys were not coming home. At first, I thought their dad was just keeping a few outfits there for them. However, my eight-year-old got upset when she was packing. I asked her what was wrong. She told me her dad takes her clothes and sells them online that she doesn't want to take her favorite shirt over there. I immediately called my ex. I asked her to return our daughter's clothes. Not wanting to throw my daughter under the bus, I blamed it on them not having enough for school. He played dumb. He said he got rid of the clothes that were too small. I pointed out that the jeans our seven-year-old had were brand new. He then said it was only fair that he got some cash because he owned the trailer and land. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this good. 
I was pissed. I took my daughters down to the dollar store and bought cheap shirts, to a thrift store and bought cheap shorts. We had a girls tie-dye night, hot pink everything. Each made five shirts and five bottoms. I let our girls design and decorate them. My girls loved it. The following week, X sends the girls home. I can tell he's mad, but he didn't say anything. The clothes were not returned. No fear, I knew this would be an issue. We made extras. When the girls went back, they were wearing tie-dye. They were there with their dad for an hour before he called and demanded different clothes. I kindly told him that our daughters love those clothes. They really, really love tie-dye. X got even angrier and said his parents have a major family party and the girls can't wear pink tie-dye. I told him that he should go buy other clothes if he didn't want them to wear it. He called me a jerk for being petty. Am I the jerk? Absolutely not the jerk. This dude is ridiculous for trying to sell their kids stuff and then expecting you to continue to supply them with clothing on their kids and in their kids' suitcases for them to turn around and sell? What did this guy even expect to happen here? Of course you're going to send your kids over wearing the cheapest, simplest clothes. And let's simplify this to what it really is. The ex-husband might say, oh, well, I'm just taking back some of the money I gave you, but they're really stealing from the kids because the kids like those clothes and the clothes were always theirs and meant for them. So everything you take away isn't from your ex, it's from your own children. Our next story is from Princess Azula. Am I the jerk for still having my daughter's first birthday party? Okay, here's the background. My 24-year-old female, friend, 24-year-old female, and I gave birth on the same day. Her due date was supposed to be two months later, but her baby came early. We were both so excited. Unfortunately, six months ago, her baby passed on. I can't begin to imagine her pain. I've tried to be there for her as best as I could. She just wants to be left alone most of the time, which I understand. Now onto the issue. My daughter's birthday is coming up in September, and we plan to invite close friends and family to her birthday party. I texted her before invites were sent out saying, I wanted to let you know my daughter's birthday's on said date, and I just wanted to let you know you're invited, no pressure on you to come at all. She texted me back saying, oh no thanks, I'll be at my daughter's grave that day. You know, the one that will never have a first birthday? Freak off. She told our other friends how pissed she is at me for even inviting her and that it's awful that I'm still celebrating this day. And they kind of see her side, saying I could have been more sensitive. My husband doesn't think I did anything wrong and it's just grief talking. Am I the jerk for inviting her? I think Opie's not the jerk here. And I think all of those friends that say, oh, well, we kind of see her side are saying that solely out of pity points. It might be rude of me to say, but like, I feel like they're just saying it just to be nice. They see their side because they don't want to upset them, and then they say, well, you could have been more sensitive, OP, because they don't want to upset them. It's awful, it sucks, and it's horrible that they have to grieve, but that doesn't place an obligation on you to stop you or your baby's lives. And what was the alternative to? Don't invite them? How does that look? Our next story is from throwaway10876543. Am I the jerk for telling my ex-wife's new partner that she's not the parent of our unborn child and has no say in what his name will be? My ex-wife, female 28, and I, male 28, split up a few months ago due to her coming out as a lesbian. The split was quite amicable and we've remained quite good friends. While she did cheat on me during the relationship, I understand that it was due to her sexuality. She came from a very conservative Christian household who have cut her off now that she's come out. Marrying me was a way of placating her family, I suppose. The issue now arising is the fact that she's pregnant with our child. During our marriage, we agreed that if we had a son, we would name him after both of our grandfathers, as they were both very important people in our lives. Samuel Jacob last name. An issue has been raised by her new partner, female 27, over the name. Now, I will fully admit that her new partner and I have never really got along. She was a friend of a friend before she got together with my ex, and we just never saw eye to eye. But we both have tried to be cordial for the sake of my ex. While we recently were discussing the name of our child, the partner outright refused to accept that we were going to name the child Samuel. She had an ex named Samantha who was now abusive towards her, and said that she could not stand to have her child share the name with her ex. 
Now, I fully understand that this woman will inevitably be a part of my son's life, but I explained to her the meaning behind why we were naming him Samuel and how important it was to me. My ex also backed me up, saying how this was decided long before she was in the picture, and while she was sorry that the name offended her, she would leave the decision to me. Her partner proceeded to get very angry again, insisting that her child would not have that name. This sent me over the edge. I asked her if I got her pregnant. She of course said no. I asked if she somehow magically got my ex pregnant. Again, she said no. I then told her that since she was not the parent of this child, that my ex and I will give our child the name we want regardless of her opinion. The partner proceeded to go ballistic at me, calling me homophobic for not giving her any input and forcing her into the situation and stormed out of the room. My ex was also not happy with me but still agreed that I will have the final say in the naming of our child. This was a few days ago and I haven't spoken to either of them since. I've asked around a few of my friends and have gotten a mixed response when I asked if I was wrong. Personally, I'm of the opinion that OP is not the jerk, and also I fail to see how this would be some kind of homophobic issue. This is OP and their ex-wife's kid that they're having, and they agreed that this name was already settled on well in advance before this person was in the picture, and it's not even their own legal kid. They're not even going to be able to adopt this kid. Like, I'm sorry, but despite being in their lives, probably, they don't have any claim to choose what name they have. Honestly, people resorting to the, oh, you're homophobic, as a way of trying to become a victim in a lot of different situations that aren't even related to sexuality, people like that only stand to hurt the continued progress that LGBT people are having. Our next story is from Throwaway HHHJ. Would I be the jerk if I sell my niece's electronics? My niece, 16, lives with me since her parents passed away about a year ago. She knows how to drive, but her driving isn't very good. She's only allowed to drive my car when I'm with her to help her learn more. The past few nights, she's been asking me to let her drive, but I was too busy. Last night, she went out of my home with my car and slightly hit the wall. I was and still am very angry because my car is new and very expensive. I grabbed all of her electronics and told her I'm going to sell them and use the money to fix my car. She cried and begged me not to because her dad bought them for her. She promised to pay for it all if I don't sell them, but I don't see that happening because she doesn't have a job. I might be the jerk because I don't need the money and can pay for it myself, but I want to do this to teach her a lesson. My wife says I'm a jerk though, so I don't know. I think OP needs to be very careful here because they could do some serious damage. There's no denying the fact that their parents passed away only about a year ago and those parents definitely bought her those things. I would say maybe they're not the jerk if there was no sentimental issue at hand, but if you take away things that have sentimental value, even if it's just because the parents recently-ish bought it for them, then yeah, I think you're a jerk big time. Kids do make mistakes. It was a costly one, but if anything, try to just make this a learning lesson and maybe try to get your money out of them in a more hands-on way with like chores, grounding, just basically something that's not going to possibly damage their psyche. Our next story is from It's a Throwaway. Am I the jerk for telling my wife our daughter is more important than she is? Our daughter is turning 18 in October. She's a great kid, always pulled straight A's, never in any type of trouble and she's very respectful. My wife recently decided to have a talk with her about adult responsibilities. I had no knowledge of this conversation until my daughter came to me crying because she was scared about living on her own. I was confused at first. Then she told me her mother said that she needs to start looking for a job because she'll be expected to get her own place after her birthday. I was appalled because we never discussed throwing her out at 18. When I confronted my wife, she said our daughter wasn't a child anymore and needed our push to become an adult. I told her I was really baffled that she would exclude me from such a serious decision and conversation. I asked my wife how she expects our kid to make it on minimum wage, especially considering the rent is out of control in our area. She then informs me that she had planned for us to pay half her rent until she was 20. I asked her why she wanted our kid gone so bad. As our argument intensified, 
I believe she slipped by, saying she needed the space, her bedroom, for her art studio. I couldn't believe it. I told my wife if her hobby was more important than our daughter, she should be the one looking to rent. However, she took that as me saying move out, but that's not how I meant it. I was implying for her to rent more space for her studio and to leave our daughter alone. She didn't believe that's what I actually meant. She then gave me the silent treatment for three days. Our daughter, however, was still upset as she processed her mother wanting her out. She realized moving into a rental meant that she had to leave her two cats behind. She's had these cats since she was a young child. That alone devastated her. She told me, I don't want to turn 18. I don't want to celebrate my birthday. I picked the argument back up with my wife at that point. I said, our daughter isn't moving out until she decides on her own terms. Because she is more important than you or your hobby. She looked stunned. And maybe in the heat of the moment I didn't choose my words wisely. I couldn't bear to see our daughter so upset any longer. I don't want her struggling to make ends meet and not being able to follow her dreams. The last thing I want is for her to feel rushed. As far as my wife goes, she's not talking to me at all and she's been cold towards our daughter. I think OP's not the jerk and I think OP has a modern and reasonable mindset. I think it's great if you have hobbies but not if you gotta kick your own kid out of the house right away when they turn 18 to do so. If you had kids or if you do currently have kids, would there ever be an age where you would actually kick them out straight up? Or as long as they have their head on straight and they're not doing anything inappropriate, would you be okay with having them around until they figure something out even if that means into their late 20s or even maybe later? I'd like to know what you guys think. Our next story is from Caddis Killies. Am I the jerk for scaring my boyfriend and his brother by going missing when they repeatedly left my friend and I behind on a hike? I had plans with my boyfriend Jack, his brother Tyler, and my friend Paula to go hiking last weekend. I had suggested an easier, flatter trail for us to hike, since Paula isn't as experienced of a hiker as the rest of us. I thought the plan was to just hike together and hang out and talk. But the day of, we started at a normal pace and the guys just kept going faster. Paula was lagging behind, kind of out of breath, and I stuck with her. I was irritated because a huge rule of wilderness safety is to stay with your group. Because crap can go sideways fast in the back country. They were stopping to wait every mile or so. We never knew where they were because they didn't say, and nobody had cell service. But as soon as we caught up, they would start going at top speed again, leaving us playing catch up non-stop. I told Jack that I'd like them to stick with us, and he complained that we were too slow, the trail was too easy, they needed their workout. After the third time they ran off, Paula and I got to this viewpoint before the main peak. So we sat down to take our first breather in hours and vent. She joked that we should stop chasing and let them wonder. I suggested we just hang out at the viewpoint, until the guys noticed or found us on the way back down. She pulled out a joint that she'd been planning on sharing at the top of the mountain, and we hung out and smoked and ate our lunch. It was an hour and a half before the guys came back. We heard them before we saw them. They were sprinting down the trail, yelling our names. I called out, over here, except I was coughing from smoking so it sounded more like, over <coughs> oh, here. The guys came running to the viewpoint and Paula was giggling her butt off at my attempt to yell. I got the giggles from her and the joint we just finished, too. The guys confused our giggling for crying since we were both just kind of wheezing with laughter and were asking what happened. I was like, we're okay, we're just high. Tyler got really mad at us, saying they'd stopped off a half a mile from the summit to wait for us before making the final push. And after we didn't show up for an hour, they decided to turn back to look for us instead of summiting. And he was furious that we just stopped to get high without telling them. I was like, I thought we split up. Like, y'all were off doing your own thing all day. And my boyfriend raised his voice at me, telling me that you don't split up a group without communication. At that, Paula and I just got the giggles again. Like, no crap. It was just funny how he was saying the same thing I'd been saying all day. For the rest of the hike, the guys were angry with us because we ruined their summit, making them turn back just because we didn't even try to keep up. Am I the jerk for going missing on a hike? 
absolutely not, and honestly, I'm glad a situation like this turned out to be a good memory. Who invites somebody out on a hike, or takes somebody out on a hike that clearly isn't as experienced a hiker and doesn't compensate at all for them? Just expects them to slowly follow you from, I don't know, a mile behind? This next story is from SexyCupcake0218. Am I the jerk for being annoyed a boyfriend is home on my day off? Title's a bit weird, let me explain. So, my boyfriend and I both work the day shift, so we're both home after 6pm. We have our days off set up so that he's off Saturday and Sundays, and I'm off Sundays and Mondays. We each get one day off to ourselves to just be alone, and do our own thing, and then one day off together to do whatever we want as well. My boyfriend and I have fairly different hobbies. We split doing his and me things together throughout the week. He's really into fitness and working out and always being active. I'm a pretty strong gamer and enjoy SFX and more indoor and less sweaty things. So we stayed up stupid late last night and called into work this morning. 9 out of 10 times I wouldn't care, but it's Monday. It's my only day to myself and he's constantly bugging me to go work out with him or go on a hike or just generally to be active because he's bored. Again, 9 out of 10 times, it wouldn't matter and I would spend a few hours doing whatever he wanted. I need this day to just be quiet and dark and me time. I'm 100% on the opposite end of a social person. I just want my one day to be alone, to recuperate for the week. I look forward to this one day the entire week. I'm definitely annoyed and definitely showing it, even though I'm trying not to. I've tried explaining this, I've tried being nice and just telling him I need some more me time, and he's just not listening. I pretty much snapped and told him to just leave me the freak alone for a bit, and now he's sulking in the living room. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk because I think it's important to recognize that not everybody is as socially outgoing. Personally, I think I'm right in line with OP here, as far as I really do value my time off. I'm not a very social person at all, and me being alone often is how I just recuperate. I don't blame OP because I imagine it can feel suffocating to not just have that time off. Our next story is from Life Thermometer. Am I the jerk for refusing to give a kid a cupcake with a candle and seeing happy birthday to him? I know it sounds bad, but please hear me out. Background, I have two boys that are two years apart, four and six. The six-year-old's birthday party was last weekend. The four-year-old, well, he's turning four, will have his birthday party in a couple of weeks. I've always had a shared party since the birthdays are so close, but the older brother wanted a party just for him. Okay, the story, we invited a few family members and some friends, nothing too big. There was a total of 12 kids ranging from a baby to an eight-year-old. We all had a good time and everyone was happy. Ten seconds after we sang happy birthday and my son blew his candles, a friend, she's my husband's friend's wife, asked for a cupcake and a candle and proceeded to say that now we're singing for her almost three-year-old. I honestly thought it was a joke. It wasn't his birthday and even if it was, that's weird. She said they started a tradition that every time they go to a party, he gets to blow the candles too and gets a happy birthday song sang to him too. I was so taken aback that I said we're only celebrating my son's special day, so we're not singing happy birthday to her kid. Her kid cried, threw a tantrum, and they left after that. Some family told me I was rude and refusing. Was I? I now feel bad, but this is the reason my kid wanted a solo party. Was I wrong? I don't think OP was the jerk here, because to me it sounds like those other parents were really catering to their kid, feeling the need to be special, really feeding the child's me, me, me type behavior, and I'm worried how that kid's gonna grow up. Our next story is from AITA123 Throw. Am I the jerk for calling my brother an inconsiderate, insecure, pompous jerk? My brother and I are not very close. I can tolerate him if need be, but I think he struggles in many social situations. He can't seem to read basic social cues and makes many inappropriate comments and jokes. He has strong opinions about everything, jumps to unreasonable conclusions, and never lets things go. My wife and his wife have been friends for years. My wife doesn't like my brother much, but she's very polite 
and courteous towards him for the sake of my sister-in-law. My wife and I lost our three-year-old son about a year ago. His death was sudden, and there's not a day that goes by where I don't grieve him. There will never come a day, hour, minute, or second I'll stop loving or thinking about my son. In my family, talking about a dead child makes people uncomfortable and is almost treated as taboo. I'm not too fond of this culture, and I've been candid about going to therapy, counseling sessions, support groups, etc. My wife and I started going to marriage therapy after the loss of our son. My family believes that we're going to couples counseling because our marriage is failing or my wife isn't satisfying me enough. This could not be further from the truth, and I think it's a bit disgusting and ridiculous. My sister-in-law invited my wife and I for a nice dinner at their place to celebrate my wife's birthday. Most of my family would be there, and she promised us no drama and or unnecessary comments. We got there, and it was nice at first. Everyone was being respectful, and I was having fun. Near the end, a few people gave my wife small gifts. We were planning to open them at home and react privately, but my brother was very adamant about seeing my wife's reaction to his gift. He was so sure that he had the best gift and wanted my wife to open his gift in front of everyone. Nothing could have prepared me for his present. He gave her a baby's romper meant for a newborn boy and an expensive set of lingerie. I was so shocked. When she looked at him, he laughed and said that it was to motivate her to bring a spark back into the marriage. Everyone was speechless until my wife politely thanked everyone for coming and then left, leaving my brother's gift. I told my brother that the gift was wrong and incredibly inappropriate. He started to get defensive and very aggressive, so in anger, I called him an inconsiderate, insecure, pompous jerk. My sister-in-law, as well as a few other family members, told me that even if the gift was in bad taste, I shouldn't have called him such names and provoked him. I may be the jerk for the unnecessary name calling. I think OP's not the jerk, and considering everything that went on, I think OP was very well said. Would you guys agree with me when I say that OP kept better composure than I think most people would? I think that was a very reasonable and honestly more subdued reaction than some people would have. And our final story of the day is from Bopalob01. Am I the jerk for refusing to invite a childhood friend to my birthday? My birthday's in a few weeks. My mom and I went out for Bloody Marys yesterday and ran into someone she used to be friends with. I'll call her Wendy. Wendy has a daughter, Linny, and when I was a kid, I was forced to be friends with Linny. Apparently, we're the same age, but she always acted babyish, which kind of annoyed me. When I was like 12-ish, I stopped going when my mom would do stuff with them. Well, she stopped dragging me along. Wendy started going on and on about how she can't believe how her daughter and I are both grown now. My mom said, yeah, OP's birthday's coming up and I just can't believe how old she is. Wendy asked if I was doing anything for my birthday. I assumed she was just making conversation, so I said meeting with some friends and going to different bars. Then she said, well, Lenny just moved back to town and is looking to meet people. Maybe she can meet up with you on your birthday. I just said, eh, I'm not sure where we'll be and when, so... She said, then give me your number and I'll give it to Linny so she can call or text you to see where you are. I said, eh, nah, that's okay, maybe some other time. Really hoping that she would take a hint. She said, no, no, this is perfect. Meet up with an old friend and meet new people? Just give me your number. I sort of sighed and said, look... I don't really want her to go. When we were kids, I was forced to hang out with her. I don't consider her a childhood friend. Wendy looked at my mom and my mom said, You aren't really forced, just encouraged. Wendy said, Sorry, I was just trying to help you guys reconnect. Linny doesn't have many people to hang out with since all her old friends moved on. Have a good birthday. Then walked away. My mom said I was unnecessarily rude and should have just given her my number and not answered her call or text if I didn't want Lenny there. I feel like I was trying to be nice about it and she didn't get it. So I had to be blunt. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here, but if I was in OP's shoes, I'd also still just kind of feel bad about it. I would be left with both A, 
I'm kind of glad she's not coming, but also B, oh, I kind of feel bad for disappointing them. But no means no. That said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk here story that was way crazier than any of the stories you heard in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.